I recently finished hooking up my dust collector to the pipe system, which goes up the wall, across the ceiling, and then splits into two trunks. And one trunk goes to my miter saw dust hood, and the other trunk goes to the table saw. The next thing that I need are a couple of blast gates so that I can shut off each trunk separately so that I can maximize the dust collection at each tool. The problem is I don't have a convenient place for each of those blast gates. On the miter saw, the trunk runs behind the cabinets and into the dust hood, and there's nowhere within reach to put a blast gate on that pipe. On the table saw, the pipe runs back on the wall and then goes behind the table and then connects to the saw underneath, and neither of those spots are really within reach either. So I came up with this. It's a cable-driven blast gate. Now I think this is pretty awesome and it's going to help solve my problem. At its core, it's a basic blast gate that you've probably seen before. But I retrofitted on these cables to help drive the blast gate open and close remotely from this handle. These cables are the same thing that you'd find on your bicycle brakes or a go-kart throttle cable. They help transmit the motion over a long distance and I can even translate from linear motion to rotary motion. With two cables, this pull-pull system is pretty basic and there's nothing fancy going on inside this handle. The handle portion is made completely out of half-inch plywood, minus the label, of course, and the blast gate is also half-inch plywood with various 3D printed components. Now, you don't need a 3D printer to make this. You can make these flanges out of plywood, and I'll show you how to do that later. But in my opinion, a 3D printer is a perfect tool for making dust collection fittings, and so that's why I've utilized it here. I was inspired to make this blast gate based off of another video I saw on YouTube by Cosmos where he made a cable driven blast gate for his workshop. Now our designs are a little bit different so I've linked his, his video in the description below so that you can go check out his design and see another take on a cable driven blast gate. This blast gate is going to go on the table saw and I've got components for a second set for the miter saw so let's go ahead and build it.
I mentioned before about these flanges being 3D printed and why I think that's a good application. And that's because, so, so this is the four inch piping that I'm using, it's a sewer pipe and it's got a specific outside dimension, I believe it's 4.23 inches for whatever reason. And by 3D printing these, I can take a pair of calipers, measure this exact outside diameter, put that into the computer model, a couple minutes later have this model with a cylinder and a square base ready to 3D print and it will be an exact fit and a very nice snug fit for this pipe and it was very little work on my part and the 3D printer did most of the work and I really think that's a great application for 3D printers. However, there is alternative ways to do this. I've done it in the past where I've just used some thick three quarter inch plywood to make each side of the blast gate and then just used a hole saw to bore a hole in that plywood and get the hole saw that's as close to the pipe diameter as you can get and then usually you have to sand to get a nice snug fit. And the only downside to this is there's just not as much engagement between the pipe and the blast gate. Um, but it's perfectly a uh, good way to do it as well. But I'm going 3D printed on this route and I really like how it's coming out so far. There's two more 3D printed components on this blast gate and that's these cable guides. And these essentially just organize the cables and also hold them in place. There are two holes on the outside which help guide the cables around the blast gate and keep them out of the way from the moving gate. And then there's one hole down here which is a counter bore. It's got a larger outside diameter for the housing of the cable to fit through. And then there's a small hole in the center where the actual fine cable will poke through. And that's the general shape that holds this style of cable in place. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and attach these and they just attach through the same bolts that hold the two flanges together. And then there's an extra screw to hold them in place. With the two pieces of tape on those spacer pieces, the fit of the blast gate is just about perfect. Not too tight, not too loose. So now I just gotta cut a hole through there.
That's it for the blast gate. Let's make the handle next. I want to turn this part into a pulley of sorts, so I want to cut a groove around the perimeter of it. So I've just got a cove bit in the router, and I'm going to use that to make a shallow groove all the way around the outside of this circle. This is all of the plywood components to make up the handle mechanism. There's a top and a bottom, a dowel which acts as the pivot point, then there's the pulley that I cut with the router table that goes over the pulley axle, and then there's the handle which will slide over the axle and be attached to the pulley so that when you turn the lever it'll turn the pulley. And then there's three pieces here that make up the housing and that's what the top will get screwed down onto. Now the cable gets fed in through this back piece through a hole and will get fastened to the side of this pulley. And I've sized this pulley so that one quarter of a turn, so pulling it from here to here, will pull the cable the same distance as the blast gate, so from here to here that distance is the same on the pulley. And then that's how this mechanism will all work. So before I glue this all together, I need to put in the holes in this back piece for the cable to be fed through, and then I can assemble the rest of the mechanism. While that's drying, I can work on how I'm going to attach the cables to this pulley. I was digging through my hardware drawer and I found some of these, which I had salvaged from some old roller blades. These are the axle that goes through each wheel and supports the bearings. And the cool thing about these is they are a internal thread on a shaft, and that'll make a perfect cable clamp. So let me show you what I came up with. 
I took one of these and I drilled a small hole through the center of it, and that's where the cable is going to get fed through. But first, I need to put in this small set screw that I cut from the end of the bolt, and I'm going to thread that in until it goes past the hole. With that set screw in there, I can feed in the cable. And then with a, another small piece of that bolt, I can insert that into there. And I can tighten that down and that smashes the cable between the set screw and the end of the bolt and makes for a really nice connection. And by cutting the head off, now I just have a plain shaft and I can now drill a hole in the side of this pulley and then just press this in and that'll make for a really nice and replaceable cable connection. Ah, it's backwards. Not a big deal. All I got to do is swap these two cables and it'll be going in the right direction and match the label. There we go. Time to get these installed. Off camera, I went ahead and got both of these installed. This one on the table saw and also the one for the miter saw. And before I put them up, I also sanded and put a few coats of water-based polyurethane on all the wooden parts to keep them looking nice. And one other detail I wanted to point out was I also added a little bit of solder to the ends of each of the cables, and that helped to keep them from unraveling since I was seeing that as I was putting them back together. Both of the gates function really well and are surprisingly easy to operate and I'm really happy how they turned out.
Well, that's going to do it for this project. If you're interested in building some of these for your workshop, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download the 3D model so that you can check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.